Hi everyone, so today we're going to be using After Effects to recreate this thermal slash night vision scope effect from Call of Duty. Now some of you have been asking for project files on previous videos, so I'll add the files for this one on Patreon so you guys can play around with it. I will probably start doing that from now on with uh, all tutorials in the future. For this particular project, you will need two assets, one main footage, which we will be applying the effect on, and a scope footage. I've extracted a short rifle clip from Call of Duty itself. I did some editing and managed to key everything out but the gun, so I can use it here with my footage. If you want to use the same clip, you will find it in the description below. I've rendered it with the alpha channel enabled so you can simply drag and drop it into your project and use it straight away. So let's get started. Uh, first thing, create a new composition. I'm gonna call it uh, main. I'm okay with 1080p resolution here. Uh, make sure to use the same frame rate as your footage. And I think 10 seconds is long enough for this demo so let's go ahead and click OK. Now let's drag and drop our main footage into the composition. Here I'm using the stock footage of a man walking towards the camera. But of course you can use uh, or download your own footage of choice. Now I want to align it properly here and make sure that the subject is somewhere around the center of the frame. For the duration I'm quite happy with 10 seconds of the clip so I'll keep it as it is. And as usual, to make sure everything is properly labeled, I will rename this to stock footage. Now let's duplicate this layer. So the bottom one will be the main background. And the one on top is going to be the zoomed in version that you're going to see inside the scope later on. So we will get to that part in a bit. With the top layer selected, go ahead and pre-compose it. I will name mine uh, thermal scene. Open the new composition. And again, let's label the layer to something descriptive. Now we will need to duplicate this as well. Why? Because I want both the background and the subject to have different effects. So it's necessary that I separate them into two different layers. Now double click on the top man layer. This will open a new tab for us where we will be creating a mask around the subject. For this, I'm going to use the Roto brush tool. Before I start drawing, just keep in mind that you can adjust the size of the brush by holding Ctrl, left click and drag around. And as you can see, this allows us to change the size of the brush. And to rotoscope a certain subject, all you need to do is start painting on the section you want to mask. Once you're done, After Effects will try to identify the outlines of your subject and draw a mask around it. Now obviously it doesn't look that perfect. There are ways to improve this, but in my case, this is really sufficient and I just want to make sure that I have a rough mask around this guy. Uh, most of the time this doesn't work so great from the first attempt, so you will need to do some adjustments. You can actually add in or exclude certain areas from the mask and to do that with the brush tool selected, uh, press and hold Alt to change the mode to Subtract and you can start drawing around the areas that you want to remove and this is gonna readjust the outline. The great advantage of Roto Brush is that it will identify the subject and trace a mask around it uh, for the whole video but we still need to kind of assist it with that on some frames. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use page up and page down to navigate through the frames and make sure that there are no mistakes here. So every time I see that a certain adjustment is needed, I'll just stop on that frame and I will go ahead and do the adjustment. I know this is not a fun process for most of us, but it's still much faster than having to draw an actual mask with a pen tool and animate it frame by frame. Now that I refine the mask all the way up to the 10 seconds mark, which is the duration of my main clip, I will trim my composition here. And last step is to click freeze. Now this might take a couple of seconds to finish, so 
while this is being processed and if you're enjoying this tutorial so far why not go ahead and give this video a like subscribe if you haven't yet and enable that notification bell to be the first to know about my future tutorials okay so now you can see that if I hide the bottom layer the background have been excluded from the top main layer so we only have the subject visible so now it's time to add the thermal effect I'm gonna start with the background so let's go ahead and add a uh, tint change this to a dark shade of green now select the man layer and let's add a colorama effect it actually looks fine by default but since I'm using the effect from the game as a reference, I will try to match the colors as uh, much as possible. So if you go to the colorama effect and open up output circle, you will see that we can customize the colors. You can do that by double clicking on these little triangles. So I will probably change the red section to yellow. I will change all the greens to red. Maybe add a bit of blue as well. You can change this the way you think is best but again I'm trying to get it to look as close as possible to how it looks like in the game and I think in this case these are the dominating colors. Alright it's almost there. Uh, I think it still needs a bit of green filter on top of everything so let's add a tint effect to this layer as well. Only this time I will use both a dark and a light shades of green. It's a bit too much so let's reduce the amount down to 50% now it looks a lot better although it doesn't have to be exactly the same but I think it looks really close to our reference the game version looks kind of flat and smoother so let's add an adjustment layer and now keep in mind that in After Effects any effect you add to an adjustment layer applies to all the layers below it so I'm gonna use that to reduce the overall contrast of the whole scene you can also add a denoiser effect. I'm using the denoiser 3 from Red Giant, but if you don't have it, you can skip this step. I'm just using it to add a bit of uh, smoothness. All right, so I guess we're done with this part. Now let's move back to our main comp. You can see now we have two layers, one original with no effects and one with the thermal vision enabled. So now it's time to add in the scope animation. Okay, so drag and drop the scope footage all the way on the top. It's rendered in 4K, so you might want to scale it down to fit properly. Alright, now I will just navigate through the timeline and try to figure out uh, at what point we actually start to see through the scope. Alright, so let's pause right here and create a new layer. I will name it uh, Scope Mask. Make sure to drag it uh, down right below the scope layer. Now keep it selected and using the ellipse tool, let's draw a circle right around this area. And now we will need to animate the mask in a way that it follows the scope. So let's go ahead to mask path and enable keyframes. So usually for something like this, I will skip ahead like two or three frames and adjust the mask every time. Of course, every time I do this, a new keyframe is created uh, automatically which registers the mask properties on that specific time code so I will do the same process of skipping two seconds and readjusting the mask till the scope stops moving and no further adjustment is needed once that's done you can double check if the mask is following the scope properly if not you can always add new keyframes in between and once you get it right go ahead and trim the thermal scope layer make sure that it starts exactly where the mask path animation starts now change the track mat to alpha mat and this is going to allow the layer to use the one above it as a mask this way we're now able to see the thermal scene only through the scope apart from the effect i believe this scope adds a bit of magnification as well so let's scale this layer up a bit All right, now it looks a lot better. There are still a few more things that we can do here. Uh, for example, we can add a bit of shake to the rifle and camera. 
So let's parent the thermal scope layer to stock footage. But actually first I noticed here that the man walks a bit towards the left at some point. So let's see if we can make the rifle follow the movement. I'm gonna pull up the position property of our stock footage and add a keyframe at this point. Let's play this forward. And as you can see here, our subject kinda shifted a bit towards the left. So this is a good time to slide the stock footage back towards the right. And this way it looks like we're following the target as he moves. Now for the shake part, simply hover over this clock icon, hold Alt and left click. And let's change this to a wiggle expression instead. So now if I play the final clip, you can see we have the thermal effect applied with a bit of magnification. We actually follow the target as he moves and the rifle is slightly shaking. One last important thing I want to do here is match the rifle colors to the actual background. So this way it fits better into the whole snow uh, scene. I think adding a bit of brightness and reducing contrast will do the trick. On top of this, you can also create a new adjustment layer and add your own color treatment to achieve a certain look that you like. I personally use Lumetri if I ever want to apply any uh, color grading inside of After Effects. Alright, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys like this tutorial and learned something from it. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there's anything you don't like about this video. I'm always happy to hear your thoughts and feedback. Make sure to uh, drop an eye on my IG if you'd like to get more frequent updates on future projects and tutorials. See you guys in the next video.